Right, I'm going to show you how to reorientate a model that you bring in from ZBrush to ZBrush. Now, this particular model is a, it's actually been decimated up, okay? So, the, um, it's like a 3D scan, if you like. And the model you can see is not, if we turn around this, if I turn the floor on, you can see that it's not orientated the right way. Now, um, if you're using an earlier version of ZBrush, then you'll probably have the gizmo. And in the gizmo, you can just straighten things like this. Um, but I'm gonna show you in the transpose. So I've got a transpose on, so I've turned the 3D off, so I'm in the old transpose tool. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn, make sure perspective's turned off, by the way. Go to a front view by pressing the shift key and locking it, okay? So you just pull up and then lock in that upward position. You can see the arrows, that's the Z direction, that's the way we should be facing. Come in here, I'm gonna take this bottom piece, we're still in this tool, see this stuff going on here, we're just gonna click down here, and we're gonna drag that up holding the shift key. Then once it's dragged up, I'm gonna get this one, I'm gonna just rotate it like this until it hits the ground near enough. Okay, now this is a manual way of doing it, so now we need to get it straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the middle, drag it out, holding the shift key, and then I'm just gonna drag this round and rotate it so it's straight, like this. And that is how to orientate. So if you wanted to lay this down for 3D printing, you would obviously go into rotate, click on the bottom base here, lift up, and then drag this down. And you can hold the shift key to lock it if you want to, or do it free and then you've got it in the straight position there. Okay, Control Z to go back. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is how we can pull detail out of this model. Now, if it's been decimated, which this model has, then I suggest that you turn it into a Dynamesh model, and that way we can get the detail across. So you've gotta make sure that your detail is still being held. So I'm gonna zoom in quite closely when I Dynamesh, and I'm gonna to go to Geometry, This is for a model that you've brought in from another application. We're gonna to go to Dynamesh, and I'm gonna set this on about 500. This will be my first test. Hit enter, Dynamesh the model, hit Dynamesh, and that's not enough quality. You can see the quality's dropped. So I'm gonna press Control Z to go back, and we're gonna set this at 900, and then hit enter and Dynamesh it. And now you can see we've lost a little bit of quality, so I need to come up a little bit more. So I'm going to put this up to about 1,200, which is quite high. Hit enter and then Dynamesh it. And now you can see we've pretty much got that quality we need. Okay, uh, you can come up a bit higher if you want to. We have lost a little bit of quality, so I'm going to press the Control Z to go back. And this time I'm going to set it on 1,600. Hit enter and then hit Dynamesh. And that's pretty good. Okay, from this stage, this model has now been Dynameshed up. Yep, and we're gonna come back to turn the body frame off. And we wanna increase a bit of this, um, these folds, especially for 3D printing. So there's a few ways we can do this. We could use a Damien standard brush and we could start to very carefully start to actually sculpt into the model. What I tend to do is turn my intensity down to probably about something like 14. And then I'll come over the model and I'll just come down these, these strips here and I'll press one on the keyboard and that'll repeat the last move. Then you can reduce the brush size down, press the shift key and just smooth out those areas that you don't want. So let me just do that a little bit better. It might be easier for you to turn lazy stroke on, so make sure that you go stroke lazy mouse, turn that radius up to about 27, something like that. Come down here and you can see you can now really accurately draw that line down like that press one on the keyboard and you can see you can add to it now at the very ends you want to bring your stroke down or zoom in quite closely and just kind of feather that out a little bit there so you can deepen that like this and now if i press this going back one you can see the difference between the two let me go back there, about there, to here. 
see how much deeper that is the other way that you can do it which might be effective for you so one is using the Damien standard or uh, something like the clay build up brush clay build up brush is good as well because you can add to this so I can come along here and I can increase this again I would if I was you with this precise stuff is put lazy mouse on to about 25 something like that bring this uh, Z intensity down and just start to bring this up on the top press the one on the keyboard to increase it and then just smooth it out using the smooth brush which is shift on your keyboard so you can see now I can kind of add much more of a contrast there between the two just using those two tools Damien standard and the standard brush now the other way we can do it is use masking we come down to masking here we can mask by cavity so if I hit the mask by cavity you'll see that it will just fill in the cavity areas now we do have control over this using the cavity curve so if you adjust this and then hit the cavity it will fill a little bit more of that area based on the curve so once I've got something like this where all the cavities have been masked off I can then simply smooth it a little bit on here so I'm going to press the control key and just click on the model and it will smooth it down it will smooth that down a little bit well this now I can inverse this and deepen these places so I can press the control key just click once like that and that will be masked so I've got all the cavities now showing then I can use something like the move brush here and I can press alt and I can push this in so you can see how I can kind of push that in now I can unmask it and you can see I've deepened those unfortunately causes a little bit of a problem but you might need to manually go around with the smooth brush that shift on the keyboard and just clean those areas up but you can see we very quickly deepened those areas I would turn the Z intensity of the smooth brush down a little bit just so that it doesn't obliterate it so just go in there and carefully clean those pieces up around here if you need to increase the intensity of the smooth brush then you can do that as well so that's how you can bring that detail and push that detail back in because the problem with 3d printing is if it's very subtle like these curves around here it might not pick up very well when you actually print it out so you might need to go in and just increase all of those those pieces around there just to using Damien standard there to cut that piece back in and then smooth that back off so you can increase it that way if you need a hard edge you might want to also think about using the trim dynamic brush so press the B and the D on the keep sorry the B and the T on the keyboard and go down to trim dynamic and this will give a flattening effect which can be quite good again I turn this intensity quite down on this model and you can see it kind of flattens that out a little bit so that can work quite well with these type of um, statue type figures okay so that's basically how you do it and finally when you're finished doing all of your sculpting on this and deepening everything you need to um, if you want to export that out you can export it out as it is as an OBJ export OBJ okay or you can if you need to reduce the poly count on this you can come to Z plugins go down to decimation master and then you can set a poly count for this so I can first of all I need to pre-process current that pre-processes come back into the Z plugin when it's finished once that's finished pre-processing which it should have done just in a second we can then decimate so let's look at our poly count now on this model it's now at one two three four five six so it's at one million two hundred and thirty two thousand so if I want it to be a million I can just go in here and take it down to something like 900 in here let me just put 900 in so it'll be under a million polygons and then I can decimate current so that's 900,000 hit this button have a look at the quality make sure the quality is good um, let it go through the process might take a little bit of time and you can go over to here I mouse over this and you can see our poly count now is eight 
199,000. So we've brought it down under a million and we haven't lost any quality. Now be very careful that you don't lose the quality when you're producing this out. Then you can go through the export process, export, export that as OBJ. I tend to keep the original and just put in there 900 thousand polys click save and then you can send that to your 3d printer